Hey all, it's Lionel here and welcome to this ethical hacking practical for the Mumbai University MSc IT syllabus. In this practical we will be looking at the different sort of system hacking tools. Uh, one requirement if I look at the software, we will be looking at software such as ADSPY, CHNTPW, Loftcrack, LCP, Offcrack, Password Dump, Quickstego, Rainbow Crack, Snow and WinRTGen. Uh, one requirement for this practical is that your machine account should have a password set up on it. So how do I set a password if I right click on my computer and go into the manage option. Inside manage on the left hand side there will be local users and groups. Inside users I have created an account called EH and that I have already set a password for it. The first thing first is if I go to see maximum number of the practicals are all dependent upon using PW dump. When I look at PW dump, PW dump is one program which when you double click on top of it, it will not help you do anything. You need to run this program from the command line. So first thing first is I will start a command line. I will move to the PW dump folder and if i run the command pwdump.7.exe you can see that it is extracting the different accounts and the respective password from the sam file now i don't want this password visible over here on my command prompt i want to view the passwords in maybe a separate file so what i'll do i will pipe this output to a file called maybe uh, sys password dot txt so what will happen is whatever the output of the pw7 program will be now output into a separate file called syspassword and that file will be in the folder where pw7 is located so if open this up a bit and let's see if i increase the font a bit i can see that i'm having different accounts administrator guest help assistant support eh i user i am an asp.net if you go to see that I can have each path, each account is having a different ID. If the ID is 500 means that is an administrator type of account. If you go to see over here EH is having a password over here. This is my hash of the password and this is another hash. Normally what happens if I'm having a password that is uh, 14 characters and less. The password is always generated in the form of an LM hash or a land manager hash. The moment my password length goes beyond 14 characters, then by default on that password the NTLM hash is applied. So if you go to see over here for my EH account, my password, I've set the password as a very simplest thing, I've set the password as root. Hence it is showing me the LM hash for it. If I maybe I'd gone for a very larger value of the password, then this would be blank and only the NTLM hash value would have been displayed over there. Right. So what I'll do, I'll copy this and I shall paste it to my desktop. All right. Uh, the first thing first is we'll be looking at a program called Loft Crack for doing the password cracking. We'll do the password cracking first, and then we'll come to working with uh, NTFS data streams. Uh, so when I start Loft, when I study Loft Crack program. The Lovecraft program will give me a visit like this. Uh, I will want to use it. I'll click next. I have different options. Do I want to retrieve it from the local machine, from a remote machine, from a SAM system backup, or by sniffing a local network? For this program, I'll be doing it from a local machine. I want to do a very strong password audit. When you select a strong password audit, what the system will do, a system will then use a combination of different password cracking techniques like maybe a dictionary, brute force to break the password and get the password from the hash file. When I click next, let's say I want to display the encrypted password hash as well. And I want to see the auditing button. I click on next, and finally I'll click on finish. When I click on finish, it will ask me to uh, copy the loft crack agent. I'll click on OK, okay. and I'll start the agent service. If you see, then it will import the different accounts into my system over here. On the right hand side, it is showing me a different technique. Like currently, if you go to see over right now, the dictionary hybrid mode is running. 
it is around 70 80 percent done after one mode is done then it's the moving on the next one now currently the brute force mode is running it is showing me time elapsed and how much time remaining it is showing me time remaining as four hours the time to brute force will be dependent upon various factors it will depend upon the password complexity it will also depend upon the system speed i was interested in my uh, password for my username eh the password is the root uh, since this was an lm password we all know that when i'm working with lm based password when i'm working with lm hashes it is not case sensitive if i'm storing if i'm typing my password small letters the system by default converts into capital letters and then perform the different lm it perform the lm hashing technique upon it so once i get my password this is the end of it i know what is my password and i will show this to my exam not to the uh, person who will be conducting the practical exam okay. the next thing is using lcp when i said lcp the interface is pretty much self-explanatory what i need to do i need to first import my password from my pwm file my pwm file is this is password file and if you see right now it is now showing me the username the lm password the nt password and the lm hash currently eh is having this lm hash and the nt hash all you need to do is click on play or begin audit what will perform i'll try it'll perform the dictionary attack first then it'll perform the hybrid attack and then finally it'll perform the brute force attack i can see that the hybrid attack is 40 it's around it's almost done over here after this gets done it'll then move on to doing the brute force attack my eh account password was root which has already been revealed over here it has now gone on to the uh, brute force attack and it is showing me time remaining as 50 minutes over there it is working at a very high key rate per second i have gotten the password of my account and my requirement has been satisfied my suggestion when you're trying is not practical try as much as possible keeping very simplistic passwords the more complex password you keep the more time it will take for getting it cracked over there yes. the next thing is using off crack off crack works on the basis of rainbow tables now for the off crack uh, I will need we will need to download different rainbow table if you go to off crack site They have different rainbow tables depending upon the operating system. They have vista based rainbow tables Since I'm working with XP. I have downloaded the XP free rainbow table from the off crack site uh, the off crack site has Different rainbow table for different operating systems and they have different rainbow table based on the complexity and the number of passwords which you want to target over there uh, the xp free small will have a small amount of rainbow tail for different passwords if i download it there are different versions which are like three gigs two gigs in size the one which i have downloaded is the xp free small is around 353 megs in size so after you extract this zip file I can see the different different tables and different indexes. It has around three tables. Oops, yeah, it has four tables from table zero to table three over here. In off crack, first thing first, I will load the pwdm file, which is the same sys password file on my desktop. Alright. Second thing is I need to select my rainbow tables. If you see over here, XP free small is showing me a not install. What I will do, I will click on XP Free Small. Or if you download the other table, if you download maybe the Vista Special Extra Large or maybe the XP Free Sparse or the Vista Free, you will need to select them and then browse for the table folder location. I have downloaded XP Free Small. I will select it, I will click on Install and then I will browse to the location where the thing is located. This is Practical Full. And I will 
go and select XP fish mark click on ok the moment I selected you can see that it is showing me now a green icon for it it is showing me table 0 to table 3 and it is showing me on this this means that the table has been selected successfully all you need to click on ok right now in this view right now if I go to see it is showing me tables below and it is showing me the uh, password hashes on top the only thing remaining to be done is now is to click on the option of crack over there when I click on crack I can see that this option now click uh, change to stop I can see the options that are running below I can see the the, the table being loaded in the RAM I can see the percentage that is performed it is saying 20% boot force performed I can see that the EH accounts password has now been revealed to be as root let's see if I wait for a few more seconds if I can get the other password as well 38% 40% it is now 60% done and I can see that it has shown me what is the password for the help assistant so I have been able to find out what is the password for the EH account at the root and the help assistant account at this QPY7UJI let's click on stop the next thing is using a thing called rainbow crack when I'm using rainbow crack when I'm using the rainbow crack program I will need to generate my own rainbow tables for it. We use a program called WinRTG or Windows Rainbow Table Generator for generation of rainbow tables. Uh, I tried this before. Let me just delete the previous file. Okay. When I say WinRTG, I will need to add a table. All right. So my rainbow tables can work on different properties first thing first is I need to understand which type of hash am I targeting I know that my EH account had an LM hash visible that means that it had an LM hash type of password over there I will need to specify the minimum length and the maximum length let's say for the sake of doing this faster I will enter maybe a length of 5 chain count and omnita to reduce it by twice by because if i keep this a very large size it takes a very large number of time maybe in hours for it to perform the generation the character set specify which type of character do you want to target do i want to target a password that is having uh, alpha numeric and spaces in it do i want it to target maybe just byte based data in it or do i want to target uh, alpha numeric I know that let's say I'm targeting just alphabet for it because I know that my password is root right now I'll just click on ok and finally if I go to decipher this file naming convention it is having an LM hash that is working only on alphabets it is taking a length that is 1 to 5 characters in length um, 2400 and 4, 400,000 length and I'll click on OK. When I click on OK, it'll start generation of the rainbow tables. Let's say I'll stop this and let's say I will just reduce the length more. One, two, three. To keep it as 40,000 LM and click on OK. And let's say I will remove the previous thing out let's see if I just keep a smaller length if it takes it or not start and I, as you can see that the percentage is now going much faster over there while this is doing I will try to import my I know that my EH account is using an LM hash so I will select the LM hash option I'll browse, I'll browse for the PW dump extracted file I'll select it and I can see that it is now imported the hashes over here it is showing me the comments which is the user accounts over there the rainbow table generation is almost complete once this is done I'll select this okay it's fully done I will now exit this program in rainbow table I will search for the rainbow table I will go to my WinRTGen folder and I will select the rainbow table which is generated and click on open. 
the moment I click on open I can see that it is now performing some work right now and I can see it was not successful because I had chosen a very la smaller length of 40,000 the generation of the rainbow table may have completed faster but it did not help me crack the password over here so what I will do right now is I will try to regenerate it but keeping it a very larger value of 400,000 for the chain count maximum length of 5 with the maximum length of I'll keep it less, I'll keep it length of 4 and I'll click on OK I'll let this generate and I'll get back once the generation has been done alright so the rainbow table has been generated for a chain count of 400,000 let's see if and if you go to see it is giving me a file that is around 6.10 megs in size uh, let's say I'll try to search the rainbow table and I'll select the rainbow table again and let's see if it uses this and it's able to crack the password again all right by giving a chain count of 400,000 it has been able to find out what is the password of my EH account it is showing me that uh, the plain text value is root and if I convert the plain text value of root into hexadecimal this is the hexadecimal value for it alright so I have cracked my EH account password I will select stop and if I go through it I can see that it has found one of nine accounts it will show me the entire statistics of how much time it has taken, what is the chain traversal time and stuff. Alright. Uh, the next part of this practical is using or performing white space encryption using a program called Snow. So let's see I will see the dot dot and I will clear screen and I will move it into snow right. for this snow dash help it will not show me anything so snow is a practice. snow is a program that allows me to take some sort of message or a secret message and hide it in the white spaces or of a text file for example so what we need is for this practical I will need to have a text file uh, let's say I'm going to have a text file that is having a thing that is called as file 1 so I will create a new text document I'll give it as file 1 and let's say I will say that I'll type some text hello world this is liner here and I'll save it alright so when I'm working with snow let's just change the size of this a little bit so it becomes readable to you alright so first thing first is I need to use the snow command when I'm using snow I need to specify the snow program along with this I will need to specify uh, the that I'm doing and I'm trying to hide a message so I'll use minus C and I'll specify the message as minus M um, followed by text which I want to hide in it so let's say welcome to practicals is the message I want to hide inside uh, I will also need to specify password let's say password is something like magic and I am hiding this into my file1.txt and I'm creating it a file2.txt over here so when I hit enter it is showing me that it has been compressed and it is showing me different available space if I go to see in that folder file2 has been created if I open this file2 right now 
let's say if I'm opening file 1 if I do a control A you can see that in file 1 it only selecting the text part of my file but let's see what will happen if I do control A in my file 2 the moment I do control A in file 2 it is selecting the text as well as the blank spaces when this happens I know that my white spaces or my blank spaces in my file is having something hidden inside of it so if when I want to find out what is hidden inside of it what I will need to do I will need to give this file as an input to the snow program again so I'm working with snow again I'll specify minus C and if I specify the file to the txt it'll give me some sort of junk type of character this way this is why this is because we have set a password for it so in order for it to extract the data from it I will need to explicitly specify what is the password used that is magic so when I specify snow capital minus C minus P the password and the file to or txt it is now showing me what is the data or the message that was hidden in the white spaces inside of file1.txt which was created as file2.txt coming to the next thing is using ntfs data streams let's say i will create two text files on my desktop file1 and file 2 this is 1 save it this is 2 and I will save this as well right. so one requirement of this practical is that when you are doing NTFS data streams alternating data streams the partition on which the files are residing needs to be an NTFS partition if they are not an NTFS partition then this part of the practice will not work so I will start a command prompt I will move to the folder having my file in my desktop if I do a dir file dot txt I can see that I'm having both file 1 and file 2 now let's say I want to hide the content of file 1 inside of file 2 so I hide the content by using the type keyword I am hiding the content of file 1 dot txt inside of file 2 dot txt but when you are using ADS you need to specify the operator of a colon over there and specify the reference file to call that is I'm hiding file 1 inside file 2 and I should be able to refer it by calling as file 1.txt okay so I have now hidden my file 1 instead of file 2.txt now if I say notepad file 1.txt you can see that this is showing me this is 1 similarly if I go and select file 2.txt it is showing me as this is now if I want to view the file which is hidden inside of file 2 let's say I know it's notepad file so I specify notepad I want to open file2.txt but I want to view the file1.txt which was hidden inside of it so so if I go and see right now it is showing, if I go to see the header it is having file2.txt having file1 and this is the content of that hidden file instead of file 2 along with this we work with a program called ADSPy ADSPy allows me to find a different sort of uh, hidden ADS streams the alternate data streams which are there in the files over there so I have created my file 2 having my file 1 hidden inside of it let's say I only want to scan my desktop I'll click on ok I'll need to select the folder to scan this folder should have the ADS type of files in it and I'll click on scan the alternating stream if you see over here it is showing me that file2.txt is having file1.txt hidden inside of it if I want to remove the hidden file I'll tick mark this and I'll select the remove selected streams from it 
now if I go back into command prompt and I try to load the file 1 from file 2 it will give an error message that cannot find the file 2 or take we want to create a new file this is because the ADS spy program has removed the file 1 from file 2 I'll just click on no over there alright for our next part we will be discussing about how we can reset the windows password using a chntpw software uh, for that what I've done is I have I'll reset my password of my eh account as root and I have now booted my system I've shut down my system and I booted my system of the chntpw iso file so when I start it it gives me this sort of view over there uh, when it fully loads it asks me the partition by number to use if i hit on enter it has already detected my windows is on dev slash sd1 if i hit on enter it selects the partition itself over there uh, next it asks me what is the part to the registry directory related to windows disk uh, windows system to, to configure the default one I'll hit enter and i'll take it as it is i'm interested in doing a password reset it's, if you see over here it is showing me select which part of registry to load I want to do a password reset so I will be doing the first option I'll be typing 1 and hitting enter over there it asks me then what do I want to do I'm obviously interested with doing editing of user data so I'll type 1 and I'll hit enter again now it asks me the user to select I'm interested in changing the EH account password so I can either type the username or I can type the uh, RID value over here I'll type E H hit enter all right I want to clear blank the user password I'll tap fine hit enter again uh, select exclamation mark to quit if you can see why the streaming password has been cleared select exclamation mark to quit I'll select exclamation mark to quit what do you want to do I want to quit again one thing to take notice is when you're, when you're coming to step 4 where it is saying writing back changes it will ask you about to write files back do it by default it is n so if you hit the enter key it will by default take the n value I want to write the change so I'll type y and hit enter over there uh, you can try it again if it somehow fails it will run no okay. so let's see if I do control or delete I'll just restart this machine and come back to you all right uh, because I have removed let's say I'll log off the account and try to log in back again I had because I've cleared the password the password has been reset and I'm able to log in over here uh, when you're doing the selection password change option doing it when it asks you for the resetting of password that time it also gave you an option whether you want to change the password so you can either blank out the password or you can change the password totally next thing is using a program called quickstego for performing image based tagging graphy uh, one correction is the earliest snow program which we had looked at snow isn't white space cryptography it's white space steganography when i open a quick stego program it gives me this sort of interface first thing i need to select the image uh, let's see i'll select a sample image let's just select sunset after you select the image by default if the image has any sort of secret message in that it will display the secret message in this type of viewer let's say i'll type a message hello class after I type the message, I need to select the hide text option. When I click on the hide text option, the text message is now hidden in my image. I need to now save this image. And when I save this image, this image is now ha having the uh, original sunset image having this hello class text hidden inside of it. Now, if I open this image again, if I open a newer image in quick stack or it is sunset one automatically it is able to extract and show me the hidden message 
uh, one issue with quick stego is when you're performing the steganography of plain text inside of your image it does not give you any sort of password option so if somebody else has the same quick stego program the text which are hidden inside of the image will be visible over here as well if another thing that i can do i can select the get text option uh, let's say I'll click on open image. I will select another image right now. Let's say I'll select the water lilies image. Uh, if I have a text file, I can click the open text option, browse for the text file, and the text file text will get loaded inside of my text box over here. I can then click again hide text and I can click on save image to save it as a new stego image. If I close quick stego again and if I try to open the water lilies one image which is having the content of the pw dump files dumped inside of it I should be able to view the content in my text box and that is so over here.